Now lift up your voice and pray for your brother, pray for your sister. Prophesy over his life for the power of restoration. I pray for you. Come on, begin to pray. I pray for you. In this service, God will restore you and you will eat your life in plenty. You will be satisfied. God, God will restore you and you shall be satisfied. You will eat in plenty. You will eat in plenty. In the remaining days of this year, you shall spend your life in prosperity. I prophesy over your life over your destiny you shall spend your life in prosperity you will spend your life in prosperity in good health in good health in prosperity you will eat in plenty no more lack your health is restored your business is restored your family is restored your destiny is restored i pray for you supernatural restoration your health is restored pray like you've never prayed before in jesus precious name we have prayed you believe that prayer shall the loudest amen. amen he said that my people shall not be ashamed you're going to hold on to another person and let's pray in this remaining months you will never be ashamed nothing that is associated with shame that will come close to you lift up your voice you will not be disgraced i pray for you i pray for you everything that has to do with reproach the go of your life everything that have to do with reproach they disappeared out of your system you will not experience reproach i pray for you you will not experience shame my people shall never be ashamed my people shall never be ashamed thank you father thank you father come on pray 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 reproach are of your life disease are out of your life disappointment are of your life in this remaining four months you will enjoy your life you will spend your life in prosperity shames are out of your life in jesus precious name we have prayed amen the scripture says and job prayed for his friends because you have prayed for your friends and your brother you will spend your life in prosperity amen everything that has to do with shame i command them to get out of your life amen in the remaining days of this year remaining months of this year remaining seconds hour and minute of this year god will cause you to celebrate amen thank you father thank you lord in jesus precious name we have prayed amen. come on celebrate jesus with a clap of friends praise god Put your hand on your chest and say, I walk in excellence. You believe it, shout it loud and say, Amen. I'd like to use this opportunity to welcome everyone. And my prayer for you is that God of heaven will cause you to walk in excellence in the name of Jesus. I also want to thank you for the celebration you gave to me last two Sunday. Uh, it was my birthday. Thank you for celebrating me. You make me proud. I feel on top of the world. God of heaven will bless you in Jesus' name. It's also very important for us to understand that yesterday, for those who didn't know, 23rd September is my marriage anniversary. Can we celebrate Jesus? 
praise God. And Father, Lord has been so good to me and my family. Return all the glory back to him. For keeping me healthy, providing for me, giving me speed. My prayer for you is that as you celebrate with me, God of heaven will give you speed. Amen. Shout it loud as amen. amen. All right, last Sunday, our father preached for us. Can we celebrate him with a clap of him? I was listening to that someone in obedience. It was so powerful. Come on, celebrate him. Celebrate him with a clap of him. Daddy, God bless you. The Lord will keep renewing your strength. In Jesus' name. How do you feel this morning? You see, the atmosphere is changing. We are getting ready for October enlargement campaign. Please, it's important for you to take advantage of October enlargement campaign. You see, the atmosphere is changing. We are ready to welcome the visitors. Praise God. And more so, you must reach out to those who used to be here and you don't see them anymore. We must be our brothers keep us. Praise God. Then take chapter 17 from verse 1 to 6. Genesis chapter 17 from verse 1 to 6. And when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him, to Abraham, and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. I take that again. Genesis chapter 17 from verse 1 to 6. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Verse 2. I will make my covenant between me and thee. I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with Abraham saying, as of me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham. Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Verse 6, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Bless it and sanctify it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The topic this morning says, Mastering the Art of Excellence is part two. Mastering the Art of Excellence. In the course of this preaching would define excellence as the quality of being outstanding or extremely good at what you do for a living excellence is the quality of being outstanding or extremely good at what you do for a living in other words you must be extremely good at what you do for a living excellence is one of the keys to assessing greater high in life and no one will enter into the realm of greatness without being good at what he or she does for a living my prayer for you is that god will baptize you with the spirit of excellence in the name of jesus you can't get to the heights, to the top, if you're not good at what you do. There's an art to everything. If you are a businesswoman, there's an art. What is art? Art is the expression of one's thought or imagination. Art also involves the application of human creative skills and imagination. So in other words, there must be element of creativity in everything you do. There's a way to receive a miracle in the church. 
There's a way to greet people. And they will say, hmm, this guy is good. There's an art to end to everything. Any man or woman who wants to excel in life, there's an art. If you see beggars, for instance, there's a way they look before they can attract pity. No beggar will look like a rich man and you will give him money in the traffic. Beggars has a way of dressing before they can attract pity. That will let you know that in your own business, there's a way to do it if your desire is to attain excellence. My prayer for you is that after today, you will attain excellence in the name of Jesus. There's a process. There's a way to go around your puzzles. There's a manner of doing things. There's a way to succeed in business. You can't receive a mini miracle coming to church anyhow. That is why many of us who be in church, we may not receive testimony. My prayer for you is that after today, God of heaven will give you the arts of excellence in the name of Jesus. And I told you last Sunday when I was talking about how can we master the art of excellence in the line of our business. I said number one is the power of our vision which requires that you be sensitive to spiritual matters. It's important for us to understand that everything that happens here, the spirit control the physical. Before our school starts or started, I spend about one month coming here every month, every morning to pray. And that is why you wake up this morning and you see, wow. If I come here, I'll be praying and then I will go up, I will come down. Casey used to see me. And I was looking at how beautiful the school will look like. Your life will be beautiful. But you have to master the art of your business. If you are an employee or employer, there's an art to it. There's a way to do your business and be the best. There's an attitude to it. There's a way. So you must be sensitive in the spiritual matters. And that is why God said to Abraham, Walk before me and be thou perfect. Just to let you know that it may be Abraham would have been following God and he didn't understand the way to receive and the way to do things in God's way. So many of us will be in the church who keep missing it from Sunday to Sunday. Why? Because you have not mastered the art of receiving. If a beggar can look rugged and look tattered to receive something from you, it means there's an approach if you want to desire, if your desire is to receive something from God. There's a way your heart needs to be. There's a way you must position yourself. And my prayer for you is that after today's Sunday service, God will meet you at the point of your need in the name of Jesus. So you can't come to the realm of excellence doing your business anyhow. You can't come to affluence or influence doing things anyhow. To come to afflicts, you must pay the cost. You must pay the price. You must master the art of your, your business. And you must master the approach. My prayer for you is that your mentality is changing now in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to dwell there so much. God called Abraham. He says, see, no artist, no artist will paint anything without the power of imagination without the power of vision you are like an artist 
painting your future what do you see what are you proposing what do you see what are you proposing it is when you have seen it you are assimilated and then you begin to paint the picture by actions you begin to paint the picture by actions the bible says and abraham bowed on his face after god has spoken to him he took action he was ready to receive he was ready to go to the next level and thereafter god begin to bless him and i stand here today and i decree over your life your blessings will never elude you in the name of jesus number two how i can master the art of excellence gain mastery over your business gain mastery over your business master the arts and ethics of your business there's an ethics there's an art in your place of business gain mastery gain mastery master the tools be conversant with the tools be conversant be consistent with your tools be consistent with the code of conduct in line with your business never you be ignorant never you be ignorant you must go out for learning you must discover the new way of doing things because the world is evolving innovation is on the increase things are changing the way we did something in the year 2010 is no longer the way we are doing it now if you're still doing things the way you are doing it as it was in the beginning you may fail my prayer for you is a beginning from now god will give you speed i said god will give you speed there's a way to say amen in the church come on shout the loudest amen. amen if you want to receive a miracle there's a way to shout amen shout the loudest amen, amen. there's an art don't allow any man to push you there's an art you must paint the picture i like you that any day you are coming to church paint the picture of what you want to receive paint the picture any day i come to this church i am coming to receive not only to preach for you there's an art to talk to there's an art to everything you must go master the art you must gain mastery over your business there's an ethics business ethics in your place of work if there's anything that have put me ahead of my friends ahead of my contemporary is because i try and i strive to master the arts of what i do recently i want the church to grow beyond where it is god said to me master the arts of preaching and you can see that my attitude my way of preaching is improving because i put my mind in this preaching business my prayer for you is that god will give you speed a good example of a guy who mastered the arts and be conversant with the tools is david i point you to the book of first samuel chapter 16 from verse 17 to 18 provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me said the king saul a man who can play well who is conversant with the tools of his business a man who can do who is extremely good nobody will look for you if you are not good at what you do so when you move out of this service begin to think as how to beat the number one person in your place of work don't just be an ordinary person you will not command influence or affluence when you live your life ordinarily the bible said get, get me a man who can play well who is extremely good at what he do or what he does and david and someone among them recommended him he said behold as a man who have a dress when once you can play well your address will be visible look at it your cv will be everywhere when once you are extremely good you will be highly sorted off 
people will want to identify with you it is not your village people that are after you you are not doing well because of your village people it is because simply you have refused to master the acts of your business a young girl who is looking for someone that will marry her she will not dress well you must master the arts of exiting from is this princess or what from singleness to 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 marry if you want to exit in the next level there's a way to shift god will push you to your next level in the name of jesus you're looking for contract there's a way I was speaking to Basima. I brought my uniform that I use in marketing my company at the beginning. You see, exploit energy here. The color was brand. I was wearing it every day. Mama will tell you. Shameless marketing. Announcing my business anywhere. You see, it exploit energy. There's a way I wear my suits. When it's time to do the dirty work, I will remove my suit and do the dirty work. There's a way. The Bible says, they answer him and said, a man who have address, he can play well. And look at his CV. He says, this that is corny in playing, a mighty, valiant man, a man of war, prudent in matters, and comely person and the lord is with him so when it not only god will be with you you have to be skillful praise god and when it was time for him to get in time to the world the scripture says first samuel chapter 17 verse 38 to 40 and david said unto saul i cannot go with this for i have not proved them and david put them off him Saul was going to give him an apparatus because he knew that that apparatus would put him in danger. He said, I can't go with it because why he has mastered it. of his business. He has mastered the arts of his business. He is conversant with his tools. So be conversant with your tools. If you're a doctor, if you're a mechanic, anything you do, be conversant with your tools. Know them. They wake you up. Know them. Know them. That is how frosters will not eat up your, your money. David said unto so, I cannot go with this, for I have not proved them. He took catapult, catapult, and five stone. It might look common, but with that catapult and five stone, he turned things around. And I stand here today and I'm decree anything that is in your hand whatever thing that is your instrument i stand here at decree god will use it to turn your business around in the name of jesus some of you who is into sewing you say i don't have big machine what have you done with the small one they give to you catapult key gloria First Samuel chapter 16 from verse 17 to 8. David can play well. First Samuel 18, 6, 9. First Samuel 18, 6, 9. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned and from the slaughter of the Philistines that the women came out all their city of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul. When David has slaughtered, 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 the only way to slaughter your enemy, sometimes prayer is good. It may not be prayer. It is when you are good at what you do. The Bible says, and David slaughtered the Philistines. In other words, if you're looking for anybody who is good in slaughtering the enemy, you call David. What are you good at? Gossip? Visitation on that is not necessary. 
my prayer for you is that by your hand you will slaughter your enemies can you be on your feet the bible says and devil return from the slaughter of the philippians lift up your voice every enemy that followed you to church by your hand they are slaughtered i slaughtered them raise your voice raise your mouth the bible says and Paul and Silas they prayed and the prisoners hand him in other words if you must slaughter your enemy raise your voice I slaughter the enemy I slaughter the workers of iniquity any oppositions against my destiny let someone pray slaughter them in this service slaughter them in this service Zeko Brandy Park at was a year in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed.